Hey guys, a quick introductory note is, if you already know what you're doing in any of these DAWs, just skip to where the DAW, just skip to the timeline of this video where I'm covering the DAW you're interested in. Otherwise, if you're getting into this type of workflow, you may wanna watch the video throughout because I, I'm chiming in and out of what I'm doing and, and interluding with workflow ideas. So you may wanna watch the video throughout. Just wanted to give you a heads up. What's up guys, Sean here from Shooty School. I'm just gonna do a quick unscripted uh, temporary video until I redo this later in my advanced Easy Drummer 2 uh, tutorial course, which you can check out at Shooty School on YouTube or shootyschool.com. Um, here we're gonna load Easy Drummer 2 into your DAW. We're gonna route it out so we can control the mixer in our DAW. And we're gonna talk about reasons to import and export things and render things. So here I'm in Studio One. I'm over here in my instruments panel, and if I do not see to my tune track folder here or any third party plugin folder that you might want access to, it might be because you're using a free version of Studio One, and that's probably not allowed. So I'm gonna to link to this support document in the description. If that's the case for you, you should read it carefully, and that'll help you make, uh, you know, decide your future endeavors with what DAW you wanna use or what you wanna pay for. So now that we're here, I got Easy Drummer here. I'm just gonna drag it out. So we have access to it. Let me just get Easy Drummer making noise real quick. This is a really particular tutorial. I'm not teaching you how to use Easy Drummer. Now we got a full song, so it'll make noise when I hit play. So let's go over to the instruments panel. Let's expand this. Let's right click on Easy Drummer 2 and the, this is highlighted down here, by the way. Let's right click on Easy Drummer 2 and put show in console. And if we look down here, there's yet another Easy Drummer 2 icon with the power next to it and a drop down. Um, this will show us what we want in a second. Hopping back over to Easy Drummer 2, I'm gonna go to the Mixer tab. And I'm gonna select down here where these little number drop downs are multi-channel output. I'm only gonna explain this the first time in, in Studio One and when I show you in Pro Tools and in Logic. We're gonna skip these steps. And for right now, I'm just gonna make these numbers go sequentially. As you learn how to do this more, you'll, you'll decide what your own workflow is. But it, as you can see, I just wanted to count up to eight. I'm gonna exclude these extra tracks because I honestly don't care about them, at least at the moment. So now that multi output's enabled, let's go over to this drop down and where is it? There it is. How did I get that? It's not this drop down arrow, but you click on Easy Drummer 2, and let's just activate Easy Drummer 2 through 8, and these correspond to the numbers in the multi track output assignment routing matrix that we assigned over here. One through eight, one through eight, and let's use them. And as you can see, Easy Drummer is populating separate tracks for them. And now let's let me turn this down so it doesn't blow our speakers out of the water. I typically don't use this volume knob, but I'm going for convenience right now. I'm gonna hit play. And as we can see, these faders are now corresponding with these faders. So I'm gonna X out this plugin, and as we can see, we have control of our snare. Channel one where Easy Drummer is actually inserted on is the kick drum and so on and so forth and now we can mix them and we can add our effects and send out to other buses and, and all that good stuff so we've loaded up easy drummer 2 now we've routed it out so we don't need to use the easy drummer mixer anymore you might even want to uh, uh, alt click these is it control click Maybe uh, key commands are different because I'm in a DAW right now. So you might want to zero these out if you want. Yeah, I'm on. You might want to zero these out across the board so you have something consistent coming into your DAW. And now you don't have to rely on Easy Drummer's, you know, few. Uh, effects modules and limiting mis mixing capabilities now you can just send these tracks individually out to your DAW and route them individually I'm going to cover the other DAWs in a second two other DAWs in a second but um, if reasons not to do this you have a really weak computer that struggles to do audio production so maybe you don't want to do this because this is resource inten intensive that's a reason not to do it um, to me honestly I've released some serious 
worldwide distributed songs not routing out to easy drummer sometimes i'll just route the tom channel out because it has way too much bass if you use a subwoofer you realize that if you don't you're not going to realize that those that third tom has a, a too much bass almost on most of the easy x library presets but um but if I'm really getting into it and it's a passion project, yeah, I want to route it out and I want to EQ and ring out every single channel and, and get it to my taste. And you might want to do that too. And you also might have your preference of other creative effects or dynamic effects, your workflow. That's why you want to do that. It's going to suck up a lot of computer resources doing that. So that's a reason not to do that. So there's a difference between using uh, Easy Drummer 2 just as a stereo instrument on one channel and then you use Easy Drummer's internal mixer to get your results, or you route it out so you can control everything. Now, if I launch Easy Drummer 2 as standalone, which is really a cool feature that I can actually work on Easy Drummer 2 as a standalone and have it in my DAW at the same time. Um, I can literally drag and drop MIDI from the standalone and from my DAW back to the standalone. It's a fantastic workflow. But if I do this, I might be creating songs. Let's pretend this is a song. I might be creating songs and exporting audio as an audio file and importing that into Studio One. I don't know why you would do that unless you have a weak computer and you're trying to, because your DAW reading audio files and not processing Easy Drummer 2 as a plugin, you know, that's going to free up resources. It's going to be less, less task intensive. So there's a reason to do that. Or, you know, and you can also export the MIDI from Easy Drummer to standalone. <clears throat> if, um, if you just want to use Easy Drummer 2 as a MIDI generator and, you know, and control other drums so and feed it to other drum software. Another reason why you would use Easy Drummer 2 standalone to export audio stems, even though I just closed it, would be because you're delivering it to someone else that you're participating with and they don't own Easy Drummer 2, so you want to give them audio files. All right, so that's, the bit, that's basically the gist what I wanted to show you, and let me show you the workflow in Pro Tools and Logic. We're in Pro Tools now. I'm going to create a new track, a new stereo uh, instrument track. Let's name it Easy. Keep in mind when we're routing out of Easy Drummer 2, the mixer channels in Easy Drummer 2. Oh, I'm going to add Easy Drummer to this uh, instrument track, by the way, which will be under Instrument. Or if you've selected in your options to show plugins by manufacturer, you'll see this down here too. It's a really handy feature. I'm going to select Easy Drummer 2. Keep in mind that each mixer channel in Easy Drummer 2, even though it might appear to be mono, like this ambient mono mic all these are stereo outputs so just keep that in mind and I'll go down to my multi-channel routing like I did in the last video and I'm just gonna set these sequentially five I'm going as fast as I can because this is not like an exciting video so this is routed correctly um, actually since the kick is only coming out channel one and channel one will be the default that easy of the um, instrument track that you're on we would only hear kick if we played a whole drum beat let's just play something out of the browser that's all we hear is kick i mean if if you have your computer speakers cranked up you'll hear some bleed uh going through that kick drum mic but that is only the kick drum channel now what do we want since since we know kick is on the instrument channel two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want six more auxiliary tracks. Let's get six more auxiliary tracks. Remember, these are stereo tracks, so if you're doing a manual, in Studio One, this was more of an automated thing in Logic 2, but in Pro Tools, the manual thing. Also, I've, I've had this workflow for so long, and even though Pro Tools is my main DAW, I've just never uh, uh, looked up if there's an easier way to automatically route this out. If you know that way, comment below so we can all learn something. Anyway, I'm gonna do six stereo auxiliary tracks. And I'll just call them uh, Easy A as in Easy Auxiliary. And I'm not even gonna route all these up manually, but, if, but we're gonna want this snare on channel two to go on this new auxiliary track. So I'll go to the input where it says no input and I'll go down to plug in Easy Drummer is the only plugin I have in this section, which is right here, and I'll say, hey, send Easy Drummer 2 right here to, to this auxiliary track. 
and now we should start here in our snare. Um, now our snare is there, and so on and so forth. Um, it's a overhead ambient is on the next ones. I'll just do those two real quick. So three. And what's convenient in Pro Tools, if this is even the convenient way to do it, is you can see the ones that are highlighted orange. You won't you you know it's kind of doing the due diligence for you so you don't select the same thing twice which is actually fantastic because this is really monotonous so if you know of a better workflow by all means comment below but that's how you can open easy drummer and route easy drummer out into pro tools let's get on to logic okay guys sorry if there's a massive audio drop and quality here because I'm on my Mac I'm using the internal mic so I'm opening up a new project in Logic Pro X I'm gonna select an empty project just do whatever you're used to doing and if I select track new up here in the corner or I'm prompted to start a new track I'll select the first option a software instrument and I will choose an instrument plugin not an external device and then I'll select under the instrument drop down it says easy drummer 2 here for me I don't it might just be doing that for me because that's what I select often but you can go all the way down here to your third-party plugins go to tune track and select easy drummer 2 and then here this selection is what's important if you're if you know you're only doing stereo as in one channel in your DAW select stereo if there's even a chance you're gonna do multi output you might as well just select multi output anyway I'm gonna click it because um, you can still just use a stereo channel anyway so I'm gonna hit create I'm going to get rid of my little keyboard. I'm going to hit X, get my mixer up. So here we go. We got Easy Drummer 2 here. And even though we select multi output, it works just fine. So that's uh, hence the, the comment I had a moment ago. Um, let me go over to the mixer tab. Now let's route this out. I'm going to go two, three, four. Let me just stop there so I can get going. Just route all these out to what you want, what you're going to use. And then here's the easy thing with Logic, which I wish Pro Tools has had something this easy. Maybe it does, and you can inform me on it. But all you have to do is go down towards the bottom underneath the fader, under the meter here, in this plus button. And, and since you chose uh, multi-track output when you were selecting your um, Easy Drummer 2 plugin in this dialog, because you selected that, um, and cancel this. This little plus minus button appears, which just makes life so easy. It's a really a typical Mac trait um, to do stuff like this. So I'll just hit plus one. So here's my kick. This is my snare. Just keep hitting plus one, depending on how many um, mixer channels you decided to route out of this. So kick snare hi hat tom. So this is kick snare hi hat tom. Let's play a beat. Uh, I apologize if this is loud. I'm, I'm on a different computer that's not set up for demonstrations here. And as you can see, uh, the different <clears throat> channels routed out. So this is how you do it on Logic. All right, let's do one more. Let's do Reaper since I have a few minutes. But to, we're, we just left off from Logic. GarageBand users, you cannot do what we're talking about. You can't do the routing. <coughs> so... If you want that much control over your drum mix, I wish I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, if you want that much control over your drum mix, you may want to export audio stems directly out of Easy Drummer 2 standalone when your project is finished, when you're done composing your drum track and you're signing off on it, then you can export the individual instrument stems out of Easy Drummer 2. I wish I thought, it, I wish, I'm not scripted guys, but um, what, what I would do is, I would have my song in the timeline here, and then I would just solo the kick drum, and then I would export the audio like this, export wave, and then that file would be just the kick drum, and then I would, you know, just solo up the next channel, export it, next channel, export it, export, you know, keep exporting each individual channel. And then you'll have a small pile folder full of individual drum instruments all synced up, and then you bring those into GarageBand, and then you can mix them and, uh, individually. So that's the workflow with GarageBand and possibly any other um, DAW or audio program that you know is not that advanced, does not have the features. Anyway, we're in Studio One. I'm gonna right click, uh, insert virtual instrument, um, find Easy Drummer 2, 
I'm not that versed in Reaper yet. I'm very interested in it though. So I'll double click Easy Drummer 2. And now here's something that's insanely convenient is before it even gives you Easy Drummer 2, it says, hey, do you want to route this out or not? So yes, I want to route it out. No, I don't. No would mean it would just come up as a stereo uh, instrument uh, track. And yes means it will route it out for you. It's fantastic. I'll hit yes and you'll notice everything, every single Op, uh, output option that Easy Drummer has. Uh, possible, you know, a lot of these will have nothing on it actually, especially on um, the basic vintage kit. Everything's been routed out automatically, so let me come on here and I'll set up my multi channel output and I'll do this to three, this to four, this to five. I'm trying to go as fast as I can for you because. Uh, I don't have any jokes. I'm just trying to work here. So the only small difference that might confuse you, but if you're already a Reaper uh, user, it probably won't, is e the kick drum is not on this anymore. This is just the plug-in over here. The kick drum is actually on this number two channel. And we can confirm that it's the kick drum because above this number two, it says easy one. And right here, we have a one and so on and so forth sequentially. Let's play a beat so I can prove to you uh, this is not a bunch of hype. I apologize if that was really loud for you. Probably wasn't though. And once again, four DAWs in a row, we have the same results. So I hope this video did something for you. Sorry it was unscripted. I do take a lot of pride in my militant scripted presentation videos. If you don't know who I am, swing over to Shooty School. I have the most elite Easy Drummer 2 videos on the internet. Um, if that sounds hypeful, hop over to my channel and find out for yourself. And rock on. Take care.